we should be able to make ourselves heard in here. It's not that big a space. Um, I'd like to welcome you all this evening. I hope you're all having a very enjoyable time. Uh, I'm Tony Cleary, I'm the chair of Southgate Labour Party, for those of you who don't know that already. Um, I'd just like to thank Ibrahim for organising yet another... Likewise, uh, the Moz restaurant, Haydar, and his agile team of waiters, servers, and somewhere behind there, there's some brilliant chefs as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, we've got two speeches. Doug Taylor, the leader of the council, is going to bring people up to date on what the council are up to, and I think that's going to be the main theme of what Spurs are up to. to. Um, and uh, obviously, that's going to speak when Doug is finished, but I will hand over to Doug first. Do you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Right, well, thank you very much, Tony, and it's very, very nice to be here. I, I used to live quite close to uh, this part back in the same road as Tony many years ago in Winchwa Hill, so it's very nice to be back here. It's very nice to be here as a Labour leader of the council, and uh, I think we are, in terms of our opposition from the Conservatives, the only acceptable political party operating in the council. That's the theme I want to develop a little bit. Because as we've got in this country energy companies charging people extortionate amounts of money with difficult tariffs to understand, bankers fiddling the LIBOR rate and charging and bringing about a financial crisis in this country, and major global companies not paying tax in this country, and they've got a revisiting of the unacceptable face of capitalism. And, it's, and we've got, in this borough and throughout the land, changes to welfare reform that will bring about increased child poverty, overcrowding. We have the unacceptable face of social reform in this country. We've got a chancellor who's developing an economic policy that's put us into a double debt recession that shows no sign of continued economic growth, is increasing unemployment. We have the unacceptable face of the economic policy of this government. We have an unacceptable government. We have Michael Gove and his policies on education that are bringing about significant changes, but not for the better, and certainly not for the better for the residents of this borough. We have Eric Pickles and a policy on cuts to local government that are only going to bring about reductions in our ability as a council to improve the standards of life of the people that we're elected to serve. Generally, public services in this country are under threat, but I want to say one or two things about what we as a council are trying to do. And it is difficult, and Caroline will know as an ex-shadow uh, Secretary of State for uh, BCLG, that local government is faced with very significant problems with the 28% cut over the four years that we have all got, and the likelihood, the likelihood in the next settlement in December of something even worse, and the likelihood in the longer term with the comprehensive spending review of things that will be even worse. So as a Labour Council, we have to be sensible, we have to manage the money well, but we have to try and do things to improve people's lives, even in these difficult situations. And we do have plans for major and radical regeneration in some of our most run-down estates. In my ward, for example, we're going to demolish four tower blocks and build better housing for the residents there. We're going to have a major regeneration project in Edfield, in Edmonton, a place called Meridian Water, that will deliver 5,000 new homes and 3,000 jobs. So we're looking to make a real difference. We're also trying to de develop radical policies on regeneration in a whole series of areas, including creative use of our pension fund to improve social housing, to look at ways that we can increase employment. And one of the areas we're looking at is market gardening, not too far away from here, where we think we can generate jobs, reduce air miles, and deliver a financial return to the council. 
We're looking to try and put pressure on local companies, utilities, supermarkets, banks to do more with their corporate social responsibility role rather than just simply paint fences, to actually do something and try to improve opportunities through local apprenticeships and to try and make a real impact locally for our people. So I think as a Labour Council we're doing a good job, but it will get tough. And you will read, I'm sure, in the local papers about things that we should be doing better or things we're not doing. But always remember that when we as a council have to do things that are relatively unpalatable, we're simply doing that because we have no option. There are certain things that you have no option when you have no money. And that's going to be some of the impact throughout the country in the next three or four years. Now, what I would say is we need to ensure that in 2014 we re-elect a Labour Council. Because without that, our ability to protect the interests of local people will simply not be there. But also, and as important, perhaps even more important, we need to elect a, a Labour government in 2050. Because the prospect for any Labour council after 2015 with a continued Tory government is pretty dire. It's pretty yeah. dire. The dismantling of public services, the desire, the ideological drive to stop collective activity, to stop public services delivering, will continue. So it's very good to see so many people here. It's a tribute to the work that Ibrahim always does. It's a tribute to everybody being here tonight. And so all I'd like to do is to thank everybody for coming and do whatever you can to help the Labour Party in the next few years. Whether that's to give a few leaflets out, knock on a few doors, talk to your friends, give us some money, whatever you want to do. Whatever you want to do. Every contribution helps. It all adds up. And if we want to improve the lives of the residents of this borough, we need a Labour Council, we need a Labour government, and we need Caroline in the Cabinet. So at that point, I'm Inspiring was our councillor actually trying to do in these incredibly difficult circumstances. Uh, I'd like to introduce Caroline Flint, who is, has been an MP since 1997 for a beautiful area up in the north of England, which is a beautiful place anyway, um, and currently is the Shadow Minister for Energy and Climate Change, That's right, isn't it? which actually in my view, uh, given the long-term future of the planet and Britain's contribution to it, means that Caroline is holding probably the most important post in the cabinet. And on that note, thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, well, thank you very much, Tony, and uh, thanks for that cheery uh, contribution. Doug, <laughs> 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 could all go out and get me coat down. No, I mean, it is important to think about uh, where we are, and I'm very pleased to be here. It's not the first time I've been invited to uh, an Enfield extravaganza, and I'm very glad that the people who were uh, consigned to the naughty room upstairs have been uh, allowed uh, down. And uh, just to echo uh, what's already been said, Ibrahim has done a fantastic job and has been working really hard to make this event a success along with a whole catalogue of events that he has already done but more that he's got planned and uh, you know you know I've been a long time in the Labour Party and I'll, I'll say a little bit more about that but you know ultimately you know you're here tonight and thank you for coming along but usually there's a few people who you know really pull it together and Ibrahim is one of those people and thank you very much so let's hear it. Uh, by the number of new members that I have met tonight, nearly, every, I don't know if you set this up for me. <laughs> He's been out on the street, do you want a free dinner? Come and join the um, I don't know how you manage that, but you know, um, my friend on the stairs, Martin. Martin, Martin come away. Ha could you believe this? Uh, a week ago last Monday, uh, the Labour Party organised a, a coach to Bristol because we had a mayoral election in Bristol. Sadly, we didn't win that one. Uh, but they put an email out, and I went, and James from my office, as some of you know, and, and other members of my office, we all went to go on the coach, and they, obviously the party put out an email. 
uh, to anybody who'd like to come along. And uh, anyway, I didn't get to meet Martin uh, Rogers actually on the coast, but when we got off, uh, we, there was an organiser out down there and said, we're all going to go on canvassing. And he started to say, right, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, all the ones go together. Team Flint ignored that, I'm afraid to say. We've got our crack canvassing team. But Martin was sort of on his own. So we said, come and join us. And then we found out that Martin had only joined the Labour Party a couple of months ago, as one of your new members, and had responded to the email and was on the coach. He'd never canvassed in his life before. He got the full Caroline Flint canvassing training. <laughs> 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 Upstairs, you know, whoever organises the canvassing in Enfield, you know, don't be put off by this guy saying, I'm just a new member. He is an expert now. <laughs> there is no place to hide, Martin. You have been outed completely, you know. But how wonderful, how wonderful to uh, come here tonight and uh, see you here. And, uh, you know, I, I, 2012 is an interesting year. It's actually my 33rd year in the Labour Party. And, uh, and for me, the, you know, the Labour Party. You know, it is a bit like a family. You choose your friends, not your relatives. You know, there's nice aunties and there's some pretty horrible uncles. Uh, you know, and uh, Martin, thank you for joining our family. And, uh, and more and more over the years go by, um, I, uh, I just feel sort of, you know, uh, some of the people who, you know, I've known for over 30 years now, who have stayed with the party through thick and thin, through pretty hard times and good times, but it's always great to see more people join of all ages. You're never too young to join the Labour Party, and you're never too old, and uh, keeping refreshing our party is so important. But I have to tell you, uh, way back then, 33 years ago, uh, imagine, <coughs> it's 1979, I'm this teenager, very keen to do my bit uh, to support the Labour Party. I go to my first branch meeting, and I'm very excited about this, you know, what are we going to do, you know, what's the campaign and this. And the subject under discussion was how to deselect your Labour MP. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, not exactly the most um, uh, inspiring uh, conversation for your very first branch meeting. But it was Twickenham Labour Party that has never had a Labour MP. It didn't have one then and it hasn't had one since. So I did for a little moment think, what have I actually joined here? Is this uh, the right place for me? But I got through that and, uh, and, and carried on. And uh, I, looking back over these decades, and I'm sure it's the same for some of you here tonight who've been around uh, a bit, um, you know, sometimes you get involved in campaigns in your youth on all sorts of issues. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's quite hard year in, year out, and you just wonder you know, will we ever see a result? And when I meet young people today, um, and they say about getting involved in politics, you know, I sort of reflect back on, you know, when I was, like many of you, I'm sure, involved in anti-apartheid, you know, did I ever think, you know, 30 year, years ago, that actually we would see the end of apartheid in South Africa? And the fact that that's happened in my lifetime is something that is very dear. Did we ever think that, you know, seeing the Berlin Wall come down, uh, and that would happen? And these are, you know, huge things that, you know, for many people, shaped our politics, politics as youngsters. And to see these things happen, you know, we should talk more about this. It may take time, but actually progress can be achieved. And of course, in the last year, uh, the changes in Burma, and with the opportunity uh, for Aung San Suu Kyi <coughs> to be able to leave Burma and come to this country and come to other countries. And, you know, I met her when she was in England, uh, you know, a situation, years under a brutal dictatorship, oppressed day and night, and she said to me, Caroline, enough of your time about Gordon Brown. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but like all politicians, <laughs> but like all politicians, I don't base my I learned that from uh, Gordon Brown as well. Look, it's been a really uh, great week uh, for Labour. Um, you know, it is actually, someone said to me that it's actually around about 15 years since we actually won a by-election where we took a seat off a Conservative. Uh, that's pretty amazing, actually. And so it's great uh, to have won in Corby, and, and there may be, again, people in this room who will help with that as well, because a, a lot of support uh, went into that constituency. And Ed Miliband said that the road to Downing Street uh, starts in Corby. But, you know, I just add something to that. That road runs through Enfield, uh, too. 
Um, and we have had actually a good year for Enfield. We saw Joanne McCartney re-elected to represent on the <laughs> I think I'm right in saying her majority went up by over 30,000. Doug, Doug and his team are doing an excellent job. I mean, I was looking at your pledges actually on my way, uh, Doug, because you do these sort of things, these your politics and anorak sort of thing. You know, what are some of the things that, you know, Labour in Enfield is saying? Um, it's saying things like, we think it's really important you feel safe in your community. Um, and, uh, and we're part of that as your, as your Labour Council. It's saying things like, uh, we're here to help you keep your bills down. That's why even though it's difficult, we're not going to put your council tax up. We're going to constantly look at how we can get value for money uh, in terms of the services. And I think, you know, not last but not least, a really important pledge, which is about keeping in touch with you. You know, not taking for granted. Uh, not thinking that, you know, Town Hall knows best in the way we shouldn't think that Whitehall always knows best, but actually constantly seeking ways uh, to keep in touch, to just check out whether the things we think are good ideas are actually meeting the needs of communities on the ground. And, you know, that sort of approach is going to be absolutely crucial uh, when we come up to 2014, when we need to make sure that we can consolidate and keep uh, councils like Enfield uh, Labour. And, of course... 2015 as well, when I want to make sure that we re-elect MPs uh, for this area. Um, you know, I have a, a Stephen Twig down the corridor for me too along, you'll know him. Andy Love I see in Parliament, and I'd love to see Joan Ryan wipe a smile off Nick Dubois's face. <laughs> Enfield is uh, an important place for a number of reasons. Uh, it had the first ever cash machine uh, in the country here in Enfield. Um, it is also, it is also uh, important because the father of Benjamin One Nation Disraeli, Isaac, was born here. Um, but also, you know, seriously, folks, is because we're not going to uh, win uh, the next general election without making sure we win in places like Enfield as well. So where, where are we um, today? Where are we today? Ed Miliband, he set out um, One Nation Labour's mission to rebuild our country, to rebuild Britain, a place where everyone has a stake, where prosperity is fairly shared, and we preserve the institutions that bind us together, that make us feel proud of our community and of our country. And probably for all of us, the most important institution that transcends everybody's lives, no matter where you come from, is the National Health Service. You know, 6,000 fewer nurses. Uh, but here, bringing it more closer to home here in Enfield, that means Chase Farm Hospital and how people feel about the services that they have on their ground, that they have a connection with, and they have family members working there. They have a collective history of what health service that that has provided. It's about fairness and not about tax cuts for millionaires, especially when pensioners here in Enfield next year, next April, will see a tax rise. It's about all young people having a stake in their future and not just the 50% who are able to get to university. You know, One Nation is also, and I say this very seriously, One Nation Labour is also about being prepared to talk to the people who didn't vote for us in 2010. You know, one thing I learned from my time uh, joining the Labour Party in 1979 and having those 18 terrible years in opposition was that uh, for the first part of those 18 years, we spent too long blaming the voters for not voting for us rather than trying to understand why. Um, if we want to make sure that this, this government, this coalition, this hybrid that we have at the moment doesn't get another chance, uh, we've got to make sure that we are listening to the voters. And, you know, we have to understand about what their, some of their concerns were. Some of that was about feeling that they didn't feel that, you know, there was hope for their children unless they maybe got to university. You know, what was the hope for their children? Where were the jobs uh, going to come from? For some of them, they felt that actually immigration, rather than being a good thing, was making their life harder and more difficult, and nobody wanted to listen to that either. Um, it was also about, as has been said by Doug, about those at the top, no matter what happens, no matter what global financial crisis hits us,
can ride out the storm and not accept their responsibilities and really not seeming to have any compassion or care and getting away with it. But it was also about feeling that some of those who weren't in Europe weren't doing enough to help themselves and weren't doing enough to take the opportunities that Labour did provide in government too. And I think we need to really understand that because otherwise if we don't, we won't get the hearing on the doorstep that we need. But the good news is we are starting to be heard. Uh, we've got 800 more councillors following the local elections this year. Uh, we, we seem to have, I have to say, sadly, for many, in many cases, a by-election every week now, and these are tests for us, and tests for the party have to say financially as well. But, you know, one thing I've, I've learned over the years that I've been involved in politics, you know, policies are really important. It is important to be able to say something, and that's why I'm pleased that in my brief, I feel we have risen to the challenge on that. We have got very distinct policies about what we would do on energy. We would change the way the energy market works. We would have a tough new regulator to deal with some of the very issues that Doug was talking about earlier. But the truth is it also is that actually voters judge parties on some things that are more about relationships and about emotionally how they feel about us. Um, they trust parties on trust. Do they trust this political party? Do they think this party is in tune with what their concerns are? Are they in touch? Are they credible with what is happening uh, in people's lives? And also, importantly, they judge parties on whether they are competent. And it doesn't matter how many policies you have. If you are not seen as competent, then you're not going to win their trust and win their votes. And the good news for us, I suppose, on each of those counts, this government is failing. Uh, we saw £100 million. This is the party that talks about you know, getting us out of this debt crisis. £100 million wasted on police commissioner elections that nobody asked for. Do you know they could have saved £25 million if they'd had the elections next May? If they'd had those elections next May. Uh, 15,000 police officers already uh, gone. And uh, councils with you know, local, um, uh, the local police trying to do what they can uh, to compensate for that. We've seen the cost of living go up. Not just energy bills, transport bills, food bills. Um, all the time, people finding themselves having to shoulder some of the decisions that this government's made. And meanwhile, as I said before, they can afford to give the tax cuts uh, to millionaires. And we've had one shamble after another. It's ridiculous, isn't it? that the newest entry to the Oxford English Dictionary is the term omni-shambles. If nothing else, that will be David Cameron's legacy. And let's have a look at some of those shambles. Apart from the budget, I have to say, that on a purely political basis, from what I did, it was the budget that just kept giving, whether it was the pasty tax, the granny tax, the, the petrol jerry can situation. But in more recent times, what have we had? I mean, it's interesting, isn't it, with Nadine Dorries in the jungle? You know, whatever you think about Nadine, right, and I could think a lot about that, <laughs> um, the truth is, within 12 hours of being in that jungle, she was suspended from the Conservative whip in Parliament. It took four weeks for Andrew Mitchell to do the decent thing and resign after swearing at a police officer at the gates of number 10. Are we seriously saying that if any of us in this room swore a police officer out on the streets there, or one of our kids did, we wouldn't feel the long arm of the law taking us down to the station to arrest us. But what did Cameron do? He just stood by Andrew Mitchell for all of those four weeks. And that's where they haven't got their priorities right. We've seen on the West, West Coast mainline situation, who knows what that is going to cost us as taxpayers. They are saying it may cost millions of pounds because of that botched contract situation. And of course, you know, one of the biggest things uh, that they have tried to hurt us with is to accuse us of not being credible in terms of how we would handle the situation that we're in and many countries throughout the world in, in terms of this global economic crisis. You know, the truth is today, friends, is that we are borrowing £800 per second more today than we were last year. So the borrowing has gone up under this government and it's more than what Labour would have to borrow if we been able to get elected and follow our plan through. Those are the economic choices that they have made and the consequences of 
have been done. But you know George Osborne, George Osborne, yeah, he's at some of the heart of all this. He's also, I have to say, at the heart of some of the problems around energy as well. I mean, it is quite ridiculous again. You know, one of the few growth areas in our country at the moment is actually investment in green jobs, low carbon jobs for the future, because that's where we can create the opportunities, not just for young people, but people moving out of other industries into these new sectors and jobs. Uh, but they don't seem to see it. But, you know, honestly, folks, we have to give credit where credit is due. You might be surprised when I say this. George Osborne is a sex god. <laughs> Seriously, one man has single-handedly screwed the whole country. You know? So, you know, we should give uh, credit where credit is due to some of these politicians and how they go about things. Now, I know here in Enfield that, uh, you know, across the constituencies, across the world, you'll be doing everything you can through fundraising events like this, but also knocking on doors by selecting your candidates for the council elections coming off. And I've met a few people tonight who are thinking of standing and I would thoroughly recommend it. My, my husband became a councillor uh, in May uh, this year. And also, of course, you'll be selecting your candidates uh, for the parliamentary selection as well. You know, things are going better. Uh, you know, certainly, well, some of us remember back to those months, early months after 2010. But we're not, yeah, we're not there yet. And the more we can do to make sure what we're saying nationally chimes with what you're doing on the doorstep, but more importantly as well, is that you reflect back to us nationally if some of the things we are saying aren't chiming on the doorstep, that that will give us the momentum and the drive uh, to have a success in the years to come. So we've got locals, we've got European, and then we've got that general election. And let's make sure that it's a one term for this Tory <coughs> that situation. Um, thank you very much. Um, we have two other issues that we want to deal with. Uh, we've got a raffle. Yep. And Anybody doesn't want you. The seminar is taking place in five minutes. <laughs> and one of the issues that we have been working on as a Southgate Labour Party are communications officer Claire Stewart. Um, Working to establish uh, an Enfield Southgate Labour Party website, uh, which we can use, which you can use, and she is going to formally introduce that. Um, after the raffle, after the raffle, apparently. So, is it possible for us to do that? Um, do we have prizes? Yeah, I've just got the prizes. <laughs> <laughs> A raffle without prizes. Uh, one thing I'm afraid, uh, Caroline does need to... And can I say, Jen Marie Kitts is 27 today. Caroline, oh, <laughs> 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 what might be in his use of public transport rather than the other gas wasting public Green transport opposition. back into London <laughs> needs to get over to get the tube. I do. Yes.
then we'll get uh, more people knowing what we're up to. We've got a Labour and You page, which will contain all of our information about campaigns, so anything to do with education, housing, jobs, environment, that's all going to be there, you'll know what we're up to, what our council's up to. Then we've got a People page, you'll find out who your councillors are, well, your Labour councillors anyway. Farmers <laughs> <laughs> Green Guys and Growers Guys. And you've got the lovely EC officers, many of whom are here tonight, Tony. All of our lovely faces there. You can find out what we do and you can get in contact with us. <laughs> We've also got a news page, so I'm going to put up all of our newsletters here. And also latest news, Women's Forum launch, all the women in the room. Next Wednesday, Green Dragon Farm right here. Get in contact with Vanessa. Where's Vanessa? There she is. <laughs> Calendar. I'll put up everything here about all of our campaigns and all of our meetings. And then finally, contact. Just throw us a message here and we'll get back to you. And I promise I will field these messages. I look at them every day. And so far, Sarah is the only person who's emailed me, so I think <laughs> <laughs> I'll keep you busy. <laughs> So um, use it, let everyone know about it, and hopefully it can get more people out campaigning and it will get us retain our council in 2014 and maybe a Labour MP in 2015. Woo! That's the website. There. Show yourself. Alex built this website. So thank you, Alex. <laughs> okay, that's the organised part of the evening. The food part of the evening has finished as well, I think. Um, the final socialising part of the evening can continue now until we are thrown in. Okay, thank you all again for thank coming. You. Thank you.
So 